The first question is Herman's Hermit. In the latest issue of the Wrestling Observer, your close personal longtime friend Dave Meltzer said the following. On April 2nd, 1995, Kintaro Oki was honoured at a Tokyo Dome event promoted by Weekly Pro Wrestling, and he was wheelchair-bound and wheeled to the ring by Lou Thez. He was very emotional backstage, even though he had history in Houston, where Oki tried to shoot on Thez and steal the NWA title, which ended up backfiring on Oki when he ended up going out on a stretcher when it was over. Do you have any knowledge of this story? No, but I, <clears throat> I read up on it <clears throat> since you sent me that. And... Uh... Where did this match happen? Houston? Set Houston, yeah. But the event that they honored him was in Tokyo, correct? I imagine this was decades after the fact. And he was in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. which is the same way he left the ring in Houston. In a, in a, well, not a wheelchair, but a gurney. This is what I think happened. I think that and I don't know how many, how much people know about uh, Japanese wrestling. And I, hell, I didn't even know this when I first went over there. But the the mafia has a tremendous influence over pro wrestling in Japan. Not anymore, but when I first went over there, yes, because I've told the story about seeing one finger on a guy or two fingers on a guy. You know, if a guy messes up, they'll take off a finger. If he messes up twice, takes the second finger. So he ends up, I saw one guy with a, I've said this before, with three fingers missing. I said, damn, what a F up he was. He couldn't get shit straight. But anyway, what I think happened was uh, the mafia fought each other behind the scenes for control of wrestling. I'm sure this, who this guy, Kintaro Oki? Yeah, Kintaro Oki. Okay, he was, they, they wanted the NWA title and was Thez the was he the title holder then yeah he will have been yet yeah. okay and they wanted him to double cross uh Luthez and win the title which gave them they would have tape of this and all this they could back up what they said that they had the title winner well one guy not to mess around with especially back in those days when he was still a house, they call him, was Luthes. And I think the Kintiro, the Japanese guy, tried to knock him out with the headbutt. Well, all he did was piss off Lou, Luthes, and Lou stretched him like a pretzel, and they carted him out on a gurney. So that backfired on him. But I'm sure this guy was under pressure from... You know, you know, the mafia, they can be one group or two groups or three groups, but the group he worked for, he was under pressure to see if he could take the title off Thez. If he had been able to do that, he'd have been set for life. But since he failed, well, and we saw in the, <laughs> in the, where they honored him in Tokyo, when was that? How how long ago was that? Well, the honouring was in 1995. I imagine that this bout would have been in, what, the 50s, maybe? Uh, maybe 60s or 70s. I even had it wrong. When was it? Thez, the last time he was NWA champion was between 63 and 66. So this could not have happened any later than 66, it seems. Well, as I was saying, the mafia had a tremendous influence over pro wrestling in Japan. So I am sure that this guy, Kintura Oki, whatever his name was, was paid by the certain mafia figures to take the belt off uh, Inoki. I mean, I take the belt off Luthez. But that uh, that little accomplishment is a lot easier talked about than done. See, an old figure in Japanese wrestling, and if you just read a little bit about him, was the uh, was uh, Ricky Kadozian. Ricky what was Dozen. his name? Ricky Dozen, heavy, heavy in the mafia. Actually, the mafia killed him, mm -hmm. but but this guy Kintura tried to take the belt off of him, and I read later that. 
after he had buddied uh, Luthez a couple of times, Luthez said, all right, I'm tired of playing. Took him down to beat the living shit out of him, hurt him, not only pinned him, I guess, but they carted him out on a stretcher. So now you go forward to 95 when they were doing a ceremony honoring this guy. <laughs> he goes in, not on a stretcher, but in a wheelchair, probably as a result of <laughs> Luthez beating the crap out of him. But Luthez is pushing the, pushing the wheelchair. It's nice and they said over it. <laughs> well, but they said that uh, Luthez backstage was very emotional, talking about it. And I'm sure that he has forgiven Kentaro uh, for what he tried to do because he, he under, see, when you just hear this on a, on the front end, you don't realize what makes a guy to be so stupid because Luthez was no joke as an amateur wrestler. He was, you just didn't mess with him. If you looked at him, he didn't look all that tough till you locked up with him. And, and I heard this for years and years and years. And I first started wrestling the hookers, not the hookers that walk the streets, the hookers that hook one arm here and one arm down there and a leg up in your mouth. And those were the hookers because they had the, they had the potential to really mess you up. And I'm sure this Japanese guy found that out first class. And, but but for his motivation, I'm sure the mafia said, if you can do this, we'll give you so many yen or whatever. And he didn't get it done. So he was in bad shape when he left that ring. Uh, we, so that's, that's why it happened. And that's why it didn't get done. We were talking uh, beforehand and you couldn't quite remember if you had wrestled Luthez or not. And if you had, they wouldn't have told you it was Luthez and you wouldn't have known who he was. I remember being in dressing rooms with him. Nice guy. Of course, if I'd have known what I know now, I would have sat down with him and picked his brain. I picked his brain a little bit, but I didn't know what I was picking. <laughs> I didn't even know what I didn't even know what questions to even ask him. But and that's why I say he didn't look tough, but he was tough. And but he was a nice guy, always very nice to me. And uh, when did he die? Oh, in the 2000s, I think. he He's one of these people who had his last match at like 70-something, and he completely mm. regretted it. He said it was just a terrible match. He never should have done it. But I think he wanted to say that he wrestled in the 90s, and he wrestled from the 30s to the 90s or something like that, just to say he, he'd done it, and he totally regretted it. Mm -hmm. Well, I know another guy who may regret it too. He got paid well, but he may regret the uh, leaving that legacy. The last man, they remember the old saying, what have you done lately for me? That's wrestling. What have you done lately? If you hadn't done nothing, you know, get in line. 